Hi folks, Andrew here at ChatFuel. Today we're going to be talking about the five best things to A-B test in ChatFuel. For all the beginners out there who might not know what A-B testing or split testing is, I'll give a brief explainer here using our favorite cast of characters, the Kardashians. This is the perfect group to explain this concept through because there's six of them, including Chris, the wonderful matriarch, so they're divided into two groups of three. We have the top row and the bottom row. This is essential for A-B testing because the concept is all about equally splitting up your audience into two or potentially more groups, exposing them to different content, and then measuring how that content impacts their likelihood to perform a certain call to action, and then double down your efforts on that best performing variation so that you can optimize your conversion rate and ultimately make more sales. In case you're wondering, in Chatfuel, how you actually facilitate all of this technically is through our A-B test plugin. This is a pro-only feature, so if you want to optimize your conversion rates, make more sales, whether you are an e-commerce owner or an agency owner, definitely upgrade to the A-B test plugin today and get started. So as for the e-commerce business owner out there, the Shopify store owner, whatever you might be, the goal with this plugin again is to essentially repair any leaks in your sales funnel. So right now, maybe you have a great funnel, but there's a point of drop off in that funnel, test a bunch of different things, see what converts that traffic best. And then obviously you're directing more traffic to that end goal. For the agency owner, on the other hand, you can offer this as a service, as a monthly retainer. I know personally when I was running my chatbot agency, I would just do the chatbot build, it was a one and done type situation, and then that was it. But if you wanna milk more revenue out of that situation while still providing value, of course, you can use the A-B test plugin to provide ongoing optimization of the chatbot flow because building bots is an iterative process and so you can offer this optimization as a monthly retainer service and charge for it. Although hopefully unlike Billy Mays, you're charging a little bit more than 10 easy payments of 19.99, hopefully you're charging 100 times that, let's say per month to do this sort of ongoing maintenance. Small disclaimer, based on what I just said, you should be aware that this A-B test plugin may cause enlarged profits, whether you are an e-commerce owner or an agency. So just beware, you don't wanna end up to the point where you're drowning in so much cash that you've fallen and you can't get up like this woman here. But if that happens, just add the sunglasses, put on the gold chain and block out those haters. All that aside, let's now dive into the actual content of this video, talk about the five things you should be A-B testing in your ChatFuel bot starting today. The first one, of course, is imagery. Now, I've added this GIF here because I don't know who this woman is, but she's a legend. She should be casted in some like Jason Bourne or James Bond movie, but she's fleeing the paparazzi who are taking all these images of her. Obviously, some images they're taking are better than others, and so it's all about showing the best images to your customers, showing those that will convert best. Here's one example of A-B testing an image, if you will. On the left-hand side, you kind of see the reality of the situation versus your expectation on the right. But it's important to note that you shouldn't just go with what you think customers will be more likely to respond to or purchase. Instead, you should actually test these intuitions that we all have. Regardless though, the argument here isn't really whether or not you should use images to sell your products. Just be conscious of testing different images, even ones you might not expect to perform that well, because you never know, let data inform your decisions. Another way that you can test images in ChatFuel is through using image personalization. These four screenshots that you see here are courtesy of Dana Tran at codelessbot.com. She has a service where you can use image personalization in ChatFuel, so you can check that out. This video isn't sponsored by her in any way, but 
really cool stuff that you can do, especially related to e-commerce in that bottom right image. You can combine this image personalization and test through something like the cart abandonment tool that we have. It's called Cart Reminders, plugs into your Shopify store. So you can combine this personalization with cart abandonment to really see your sales soar. Next up are buttons. So this is probably one of my favorite scenes from the movie Elf. Great movie, by the way, if you haven't seen it. So buttons, how can you test and experiment with different variations here? Well, there are two types of buttons, if you will, to use that term loosely. The first is buttons themselves, and the second are quick replies. You might be asking Andrew why the heck are they dressed up like kids and that's simply because sometimes choosing between buttons and quick replies is like a mom choosing between her favorite child. It's hard to do, you don't always know what to do. But the reason why you should split test this is because quick replies and buttons can render differently on different devices and even though the experience might look smooth and run well when you're testing it on your device, it's not always the case for others. So it's important to test this across all your subscribers at statistically significant levels. So you can see if there's a lot of drop off, maybe simply changing to a button might solve that issue. Here's an example of using this button split testing in the wild. Here, let's say we're selling a propane tank called Chat Fuel, very originally. And so one example of this is modifying not only the type of button, if you will, the button versus the quick reply, but the text that we're using itself on that call to action. In this case, we've added an emoji. You can also switch up the name of the call to action itself, maybe add to cart, browse now, shop now, etc. So there's a lot of things that you can test even within the buttons themselves, but hopefully it gets the gears turning in your head as to what's possible. Number three of five here, we have content order featuring Missy Elliott, who famously said, I put my thing down, flip it and reverse it. This is all about changing up the content order of your chat experience, which sounds vague probably. So let's explain that a little bit more in less abstract terms. So here we have an example flow, right? The user starts by receiving a text message, there's a little bit of a typing animation and then they see a gallery card. Let's say on this gallery card, we're an ice cream shop, we're selling ice cream. So we're showing a cookie dough ice cream that they can buy in that gallery card. An example of how you could split test this with different audiences is right here. So instead of showing that gallery card last, let's say we show it first with the hypothesis that people are more likely to buy if they see that ice cream first rather than later. And obviously we could test that using the AB test plugin. And so that's what I mean by varying up the order here. Another similar way that you can test order and experiment with that is not so much the order itself, but the length of the chat experience itself. So for example, let's say that you are an e-commerce store. Again, let's use this ice cream example and you have a product recommendation quiz currently that is five questions based on those five questions. It will recommend the bot will recommend the user what ice cream flavor they would like most. You can still run that variation, but in addition, maybe you experiment with a three question quiz with the hypothesis being that, hey, this is shorter, people are gonna be more engaged, there's gonna be less drop off, and therefore it will lead to more sales. So this is another way that you can experiment with order and content in your messenger bot. The fourth thing you can split test in chat fuel is how you capture email and phone numbers in messenger i have this gif here because if everyone's dog had this work ethic we actually wouldn't need chat bots i'm jealous like i wish my dog was this productive and well dressed too by the way but anyway the question is how do we test these different ways of capturing email and phone in chat fuel pretend for a second that you are chuck norris Chuck Norris, I would say, is the only person qualified to ask this question. Let's say he is asking the Kardashians that we showed earlier for their phone numbers in his messenger bot. So how he could do this, he could accomplish this in a couple different ways, but as two examples here, let's say he wants to split test 
two different plugins. The two different plugins he wants to test here are the save user phone number and save user input plugin. As you might know with the save user phone number plugin, this is a way that Facebook will automatically suggest the user's phone number that they have on file on Facebook to them. So just with one click, they can submit that to the bot and we've captured the phone number. Alternatively, we have the save user input plugin where users have to manually enter that phone number and it can be verified. Common sense would tell us that the save user phone number plugin, it's less effort for the user, so that's gonna convert better. But for all we know, maybe people are more likely to type in their phone numbers manually. And so we could test that using the save user input plugin. Or perhaps we have another variation entirely where we don't ask the user for their phone number or we give them an option to skip. And we find that even though we're not capturing the user phone number, it's actually more likely to convert those people long-term for buying whatever product we're selling. So there's a number of ways to test this, but these are just two very popular ones that I would highly recommend playing with. And then finally here, number five, we have user attributes. And you might be wondering why Mrs. Doubtfire is on here, kind of extinguishing this fire on her chest. And the answer is that user attributes is synonymous with personalization and an example of personalization in chat fuel would be using the user's last name, such as Mrs. Doubtfire to greet them or just communicate in general throughout the messenger experience. On the left hand side, we have no personalization, no user attribute. On the other side, we have personalization. So let's say we have this cheese shop called the Dairy Godmother. And again, our hypothesis is that, hey, people will be more likely to order cheese from us if we use their first name. So on the right hand side, that's exactly what we've included. And we could test the metrics of this based on how many people are ordering, clicking through to our website, etc. One more example in terms of testing with user attributes is dates. And I say that because these hamsters are on a date here. This is probably the most adorable GIF I've ever seen. But that aside, what I mean by dates is using dates and times as attributes in your A-B test as well. So for example, in the welcome message, you could greet the user based on the time of day that they're interacting, whether it's the morning, afternoon, evening, or you could greet them by the day of the week. It sounds silly that this would have any effect whatsoever on conversion rates or engagement, but you don't know and data is there to answer that question. So that's the importance of testing. Also, another shout out to Dana at codelessbot.com who has a plugin called Git Date that can facilitate this process for you if you are interested in providing any date information when you're testing various user attributes. So that is the video. Those are the five best things that you can A-B test in ChatFuel. I know this video was very different and experimental in nature, so hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know down in the comments below. And also you see this thumbs up emoji, please leave a thumbs up, a like down below for this video. Really helps us out, not so much selfishly, but just to get this video out to other people who can find value in this. Also down below in the comments, please let me know which of these five tools do you plan on split testing in the future and how will that help you in your business? So thanks again for watching. See you in the next video and happy botting.